grabando. La bienvenida y arrancamos. Estamos sí. grabando. Perfecto. Muy buenos días. Esta es la presentación de nuestro primer este, evento, parte de... Eh, ah, es en inglés. Welcome everyone. This is the starting and the presentation of the 2021-18 18th International Conference of Electrical Engineering, Computing Science and Automatic Control. And just to remind you that uh, this uh, day, this morning, another time because of the pandemic, we are doing this a virtual session and reminding you that these sessions will be later on our website on a YouTube channel. And also I want to uh, be aware that all the, all the conferences will be documented and will be available to you at a later time. So far without, without further ado, I want to pass the word to Dr. Gerardo Silva. Thank you, Valente. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, 2021 18 International Conference on Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Automatic Control, CCE 2021. Celebrated here at Simvestad in Mexico City uh, uh, during November, uh, starting today, uh, 10 to the next Friday. So this uh, conference is uh, sponsored by the IEEE, the Electron Devices Society, and Simvestad and the Department of Electrical Engineering and colleagues from uh, different units in Simvestad. So first of all, we want to, to give a very warm welcome to all authors, attendees, colleagues, students, personnel, and visitors, virtual visitors to this uh, second virtual edition of the CCE 2021. And we sincerely wish, wish you a good and satisfying virtual conference. So some, some words uh, starting the conference. Uh, uh, we, we have almost uh, two years with the global pandemic uh, due to the COVID uh, with many important affections on our human, social, economic, academic and working activities. Of course, our research activities are really affected. This year, the program committee and the organization uh, of the CCE 2021 decided again to celebrate now the, this second uh, virtual uh, conference. And once more time, the registration fee is free of any charge for all authors and attendees to the conference. Uh, however, the final list of articles to be published in the IEEE Explore will consist only with those uh, who will be presented for discussion at this conference. Some short introductions. This year, we are celebrating the 18th edition of the International Conference uh, uh, a conference on Electrical Engineering, Computing Science and Automatic Control, uh, whose organization is uh, here at Simvestab of the National Protonic in uh, Institute and is made uh, possible by the collaboration of the Department of Electrical Engineering, the Department of Automatic Control, the UMI LAFMIA uh, here at Simvestab. Um, and, and this time we, we also received the, the, the strong help by Simvestab Guadalajara, Tamaulipas, and Saltillo. So this conference is a specialized and multidisciplinary forum dealing with different research areas related with electrical engineering, computing science, automatic control, and others, uh, which are related uh, with uh, our current uh, research topics and also uh, dealing with different technological aspects uh, at the moment. Um, well, the, open event, the opening event, uh, the plenary conference and technical sessions will be held, will be held online and virtual uh, using our institutional platform based on Microsoft Teams. And we expect to offer you the same scientific conference and technical discussions on the plenary lectures, all the technical sessions. And, and, and also we hope that you have many interactions using these remote tools. We want to thank to all authors, our program chairs, the many reviewers and the technical staff for your commitment and support to this uh, uh, CCE 2021. So some uh, statistics. This year, the CCE 2021 received 128 submissions from important from, uh, from 28 different countries 
from which uh, 88, uh, that is the uh, almost the 69 percent of them were accepted for publication and presentation at the conference. So we have um, a submission from from authors from different countries as Algeria, Argentina, Bangladesh, Brazil, Canada, China, Colombia, Egypt, uh, France, Germany, Greece, Hong Kong, India, Ireland, Italy, uh, of course, Mexico, Netherlands, Pakistan, Philippines, Romania, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Spain, Taiwan, Tur Turkey, the United Kingdom and USA, and also some others, which uh, reflects the international role of this uh, CCE 2021. We have three keynote speakers uh, which uh, will give an uh, interesting conference, uh, and, and today we will have the, the, the conference by Professor Gildas Besançon, from uh, Grenoble e ENP in the Gipsa lab from France, who will talk about from observers microscopes to microscope applications. So in a few minutes, we, we will start with this uh, keynote uh, uh, speaker. And tomorrow we will have the, 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 the conference, the keynote uh, uh, speaker, Professor Jin Yuan Chuan uh, from Canada. Uh, who will uh, talk about adaptive game theoretic decision making for autonomous driving vehicles? And and and, and on Friday we, we we will have the the plenary lecture by Professor Des Des McLermont from the University of Leeds in the United Kingdom with a talk uh, an introductory tutorial from an engineering perspective on the math behind COVID-19. Uh, will be interesting because uh, we are uh, still suspended by the COVID. Uh, so uh, some words about the technical problem. The technical problem contains uh, different topics as automatic control, biomedical engineering, biomimetics, uh, computer science and computer engineering, communication systems, mechatronics, mechanical engineering, nanotechnology, that is materials and applications, power electronics, solid state materials, electronic devices and integrated circuits, and also autonomous navigation and exoskeletons. So uh, this year we received the the the, uh, the help the valuable work by program chairs. So in this time, uh, Dr. Rafael Begovic uh, Mendoza from Simbesta Guadalajara uh, uh, was in charge of the automatic control uh, uh, topic. Dr. Blanca Tobar Corona uh, was in charge by biomedical engineering. Dr. Araceli Romero Núñez, uh, Nanotechnology, Materials and Applications. Dr. Nadia Vanessa García Hernández from CIMBESTAP, Saltillo, Aeronautics and Aerospace Engineering, and, uh, and also Autonomous Navigation and Exoskeletons. Dr. Marco Aurelio Cárdenas Juárez uh, was uh, in charge by, uh, of the topic Communication Systems. Dr. Miguel Morales Sandoval from CIMBESTAP, Tamaulipas was uh, in charge by, uh, of computer science and computer engineering. Dr. Alejandro Rodriguez Angeles uh, from Simbestap uh, Zacatenco on mechatronics. Dr. Alejandro Diaz Sanchez from INAOE in Puebla was in charge uh, of the topic solid state materials, electron devices and integrated circuits. Dr. Manuel Arias Montiel uh, from, uh, from UTM in Oaxaca was in charge of mechanical engineering. And Dr. Adrián Ramírez was in charge by, uh, on power electronics. So um, about the, the, the connection with Microsoft Teams, our institutional platform, uh, uh, first of all, we, we want to, to, to give the indications. First of all, you want, you want to go to, the, to our web page, the cce.simbestab.mx, and in the web page, you have to, to go to the schedule CCE 2021 online. Uh, also, you can you can get the schedule uh, in the in the in the, in some PDF file, and also you can go to the abstract book and 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 upload your uh, download the 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 abstract book in PDF format. So um, to connect to the schedule, the uh, in the CCE 2021 online. Uh, the schedule is organized in three different rooms, in three parallel rooms, uh, room one, room two, room three. So uh, you have to give a click uh, to join the session for instant bio one, uh, SS one, AC one, etc. And also uh, between sessions, we will have uh, several breaks. Uh, 
virtual coffee breaks. Uh, uh, and this will be important for interconnections, uh, also for coffee, lunch time, and also interactions, but remote interactions, of course. So this is the, the web page. Uh, so to go to the technical program, you have to, to go to our web page. So here you can go to the scheduled CCE 2021, 2021 online. So here you you can you can give a click here on, and also you can download the 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 schedule in PDF format in the web page. So to go to the the different rooms, room one, room two, room three, uh, you have to click to to get connected uh, at different sessions, and and also you you can you can have connections to the three different rooms, but you only can be online in one in in a time. So some final remarks, uh, the organization committee wish to thank to all the anonymous referees and the supporting staff for the valuable time and efforts which have made possible a successful 2021 uh, 18 International Conference on Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Automatic Control, the CCE 2021. We also wish to give a special thanks for all their valuable help and support to uh, our authorities here in Simvestav, our institution Simvestav, the IEEE, the IEEE Electron Devices Society, the International Program Committee, which uh, is uh, part of this organization, uh, Dr. Wen Yuliu, Dr. Sergio Salazar Cruz, uh, and, and myself, Gerardo Silva. Uh, we wish to, 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 to thank also to Judith Esparza, uh, who is the spirit of this conference, uh, and the many reviewers, uh, the room managers, and many people involved in this conference. So many thanks uh, to start, and, and we hope to, uh, that you have a very nice conference and fruitful interactions with colleagues, students, and the plenary speakers. So uh, that's all. And let's start the CCE 2021. Uh, so many thanks for your kind attention and participations. And we hope the best at this time. Thank you. So, to, we will have a short uh, break to connect to the first plenary uh, lecture. Ya se ve eso. ¿no? ¿Tú sí lo conoces? La ah, Samsung. Yo... Ya comienza Andrés. Yep, ya necesitan que comience. Ok, en inglés, I suppose, and I need to say thank you very much for the opportunity to present Gildas Besanzón. Uh, is that the correct pronunciation, uh, Dr. Besanzón, if you are there? Hi. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. It's, it's correct. Besanzón. Besanzón. Ok. He got his PhD degree at the Research Institute of Grenoble. Uh, France in the area of control theory. And we know Grenoble is one of is the MIT of France. 
After a time as a researcher at Rome University La Sapienza, he joined us as an assistant professor in the Institute of National Poly uh, Na Institute National Polytechnique de Grenoble in 1998. Finally, he became a full professor at Grenoble INP in 2010. And, and one of the important things is that between 2010 and 2015, he also held a national distinguished position at the Institut Universitari de France. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. I am trying my best. I remind part of his honorary members. In addition to all this, he has, uh, has served in various IFAC and IEEE committees, as well as editorial boards. And not only that, he's also, he's also deeply involved in many applied research projects with the industry, as for example, the one with the Dr. Uh, Ophelia Begovic in the uh, uh, online implementation of leaky isol isolation algorithms in a plastic pipeline prototype. That's one example, he has many. He is the co-author of more than 270 international papers and 20 book, book uh, chapters. He, he was the head of a research group on the topic of nonlinear and complex system between 2011 and 2010 in, excuse me, I, uh, the part in the uh, control and diagnosis department of Gipsa lab. Uh, he has supervised and continues supervising or co-supervising more than 20 PhD, uh, more than 20 PhD students, and we hopefully he will continue doing his great work in that area. His interests include uh, observer issues and the applications in energy, hydraulics, and micro nano science. Hopefully, uh, he will continue doing a great work uh, through the years, and he will continue uh, getting great students out there in academia and industry because we need them in this era of high digitalization and high tech that we are having nowadays. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Gildas uh, Vesanson, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I should try to share something, I guess. Um, what can I? If I share this, can you see the the full screen presentation? Yes. yes. I yes. Yeah, but uh, sorry, I will just maybe share my head for a while if you can see me. Okay. So shall, shall I start right now or wait for a couple of minutes? Um, I, I believe you can, you can start. It's only seven minutes uh, before the hour or the people wants uh, to wait, uh, the organizer. Uh, I'm not sure, Ophelia. Dr. Gildas, you can start the presentation, please. Perfect. OK. So let me thank you again uh, for the kind presentation, introduction of my talk, and, and also for, for this invitation to, uh, to the conference uh, CCE 2021, uh, which covers a, a large range of, of uh, technical areas. Uh, as we can see from the title, but also as we could see it from the presentation of uh, Dr. Silva introducing this conference. So uh, for this introductory talk, I've chosen a, a topic that I hope uh, can be of interest to a large uh, part of the audience, uh, focusing on those observers which are uh, part of my own interest. But uh, from a macro uh, point of view, so to speak, meaning that uh, I will uh, stick to main ideas without entering into many details. And instead, uh, I would like to focus on, uh, to put more emphasis on applications, 
in the area of microscopy. OK. And as it was said in in the introduction of my talk, uh, I'm from uh, GIPSA lab, the control and diagnosis department in Grenoble in France, meaning that uh, prior to this uh, uh, first part of the presentation, uh, I could enjoy uh, a travel from France to Mexico, but unfortunately uh, only a virtual one, as it is uh, shown here from a macro point of view. Uh, while of course, if you uh, zoom at uh, this uh, place here, going to uh, more micro scale, let's say, you can see that uh, I'm still in Grenoble, uh, as you can also, also see it from the background of my camera. Well, which is not the current uh, picture that I can see outside my window, because for me it's uh, night starting very soon. OK, so my talk will be about uh, observation, which can be found everywhere, as I just sketched it uh, from this uh, very short introduction, uh, from uh, large scales like in the field of space exploration, for instance, down to very uh, low scales and ultimately uh, atomic exploration. And interestingly, uh, it can be noticed that this uh, notion of state observer that I will be talking about was introduced in relation with this space exploration uh, with the works of uh, Kalman uh, in, the, in the late 1950s, uh, beginning of 1960s, with all the program of uh, NASA uh, Research Center in the US uh, preparing missions to, to the moon, actually. And the point is that uh, those observers proved to be very useful and very efficient in a lot of other uh, fields of applications uh, up to uh, atomic exploration, which will be uh, the topic of my present talk. OK, so this talk will be basically in two parts. Uh, first, a, shor a short introduction uh, recalling basics about observers, uh, basically sticking to the main ideas that can be useful for the second part, actually uh, focused on microscopy applications uh, from various point of view. OK, so about observers, let me very briefly uh, define this tool as uh, a tool for what can be called soft sensing. Uh, that is more precisely uh, with the idea of using uh, measurements actually uh, available from uh, physical sensors combined with a mathem mathematical model uh, in such a way uh, to obtain uh, access which is not directly measured. Uh, schematically, uh, this can be represented by the uh, small picture here, where this blue shape uh, represents any type of physical plant or any other type of dynamical plant, with this arrow uh, depicting the fact that we can get a physical measurement from it via the available physical sensors. So the idea is to plug on this uh, physical plant a mathematical model representing the behavior and the relationship of this behavior with the actual available measurements. And then we go to a, an additional uh, model, which is fed by these available physical measurements in such a way that this auxiliary system should mimic the behavior of the model representing the system under consideration. OK, so this is a rough picture summarizing what is an observer and this kind of tool can be of course of a, a very significant interest uh, which can be uh, useful in, in in various forms and i've chosen to summarize those possible uses in three main families say uh, the first one is the very crucial uh, feedback control which will be uh, feasible using the, the information on internal state, characterizing the internal behavior of this system. OK, 
and state which can be provided typically by uh, this observer, hence the terminology of state observer. But this is not the only uh, possible use of an observer. Uh, we can use an observer also for an even more basic control application, which uh, is what can be called the feedforward control approach. Uh, for instance, uh, thinking of pre-compensating the effect of disturbances affecting the system behavior uh, as soon as uh, such disturbances can be estimated again, for instance, via uh, this uh, type of, of tool, which is the observer. And finally, there is a, a third uh, family of possible use of such an observer, uh, which is either uh, refining the model itself via parameter estimation, which can be uh, fed from the observer into the model, or uh, the observer can be used as a support for monitoring purposes via uh, estimation of possible faults affecting the behavior of this system. So these are uh, three main uh, categories uh, of applications of observer, which you can keep in mind because I will come back to them when uh, talking about possible applications in the in the field of microscopy. OK, so I will not uh, go in, in, in many details, as I said, but I can just uh, recall uh, main milestones in, in the development of uh, of state observers going back to these uh, early results of 1960s as i uh, mentioned them earlier uh, which came uh, jointly with the, the introduction of the state space formalism uh, in the work of kalman in the 1960s uh, mainly motivated by filtering purposes uh, in the context of uh, of apollo programs to the moon okay and and very soon after these first uh, filtering results uh, were proposed uh, some kind of a deterministic version of uh, this tool for state reconstruction due to Ljungberger's work uh, in, in uh, subsequent years uh, after a few years after 1960. Okay, and from that time on, that is about 60 years ago, let's say, uh, there were a lot of uh, subsequent developments uh, focusing on uh, specific uh, state observers or filters designs uh, and extending these problems to uh, generalized observers or conversely reduced observers, uh, taking into account uh, the presence of possible unknown inputs in the systems, uh, so uh, giving rise to those so-called unknown input observers, uh, with versions uh, offering the possibility of adaptive uh, designs with respect to unknown parts of the model, uh, taking into account nonlinearities via nonlinear observers and uh, other possibilities that I will not give in full details here. Uh, again, I can uh, relate those developments, that these uh, methodological these developments, to some uh, uh, application possible uses of, of these uh, of these tools uh, directly related to state reconstruction or as i said before parameter identification use in control via output feedback control design uh, in monitoring fault detection isolation in prediction and other possibilities so i'm not intending to be exhaustive here just give a, a rough overview of this field uh, and to mention also a, a large uh, range of uh, possible applications, uh, starting with this aerospace uh, area that I mentioned as the uh, primary uh, motivating uh, application field, but also with a lot of work in the field of power systems, biotechnology, water plants, processes, robotics, vehicles, and uh, plenty of other ones. And also uh, talking about possible tools, I will not be exhaustive either, but uh, just mention that they can range from pole placement to optimization via Lyapunov techniques, 
high gain tools, sliding modes, passivity, intervals, homogeneity, and again, uh, a lot of other possibilities. So this is just to uh, mention the, the very large amount of work, uh, methodologies, tools, possible applications of those observers, uh, making it uh, very, uh, of course, uh, out of possibility to be uh, exhaustively included in, in, a, in a talk, even, even in a plenary talk. So instead, I will just focus on main ideas so as to be able to present some uh, possible applications in microscopy. So main ideas mean, as I said, uh, using a mathematical model. So the typical model, which can be thought of, uh, can look like the one presented here, that is a state space uh, with an ordinary differential equation for the state evolution, where X is uh, an annotation for the state vector, gathering all the state variables, can, uh, characterizing the full internal behavior of the system. And this evolution is characterized via a known function F, depending on this X vector, uh, but also on driving known inputs denoted by u, possible unknown driving inputs d, typically disturbances, and this function may be uh, characterized by a set of uh, variables uh, gathered in a vector theta here, can, uh, which can be uh, known or par partly known or uh, inaccurately known or slowly varying, so part of the un uh, uncertainties in this description. And in the same way, uh, the available measurements uh, will be described via a function, non-function h of x, u, d, and theta. Okay, so from this uh, quite general description of uh, the typical model I will consider, so I will not talk about uh, much, much more general model like uh, partial differential equations, for instance, uh, we can recast this description into a reduced form, say, uh, more uh, consistent with the usual uh, framework for a standard state observer design issue. And to do that, we just need to extend the considered uh, state vector X into some capital X uh, by using models or assumptions on models on those quantities d and theta which can be unknown. Typically, theta uh, being in, in most of the time a, a constant, a set of constant parameters, uh, those parameters will satisfy a differential equation of the form theta dot equals zero. Okay, so in this way we can append theta to the vector x into this capital X. And the same for possible disturbances for which we can assume some model and append this model to the state model. And at the end of the, of the day, we are left with this uh, rewriting of the original form where capital X gathers all the information which is not known. Uh, y represents still the, the accessible measurements. U is the known input part of this system and n is the uh, the unknown input part which is left after we have taken into taken into account all possible uh, variables of d which can be included in the x model that is we are left left with uh, purely stochastic quantities here typically white noises okay so on this on the basis of this uh, type of extended model uh, the problem of observer uh, amounts to designing an auxiliary mathematical system uh, with its own state, internal state, denoted by psi here, uh, which is a function f hat of this psi vector and the known quantities u and y in such a way that this auxiliary system should provide as an output some estimate x hat for the extended st state x, still function of psi u and y, which will be an estimate in the sense that 
the difference between x hat and x should decay to zero when t grows to infinity in the absence of any uh, stochastic uh, noise affecting the system. So in the deterministic framework, we need x hat minus x to be asymptotically zero because we cannot start x hat with the right value of x. If we do start with the right value of x, then this, this right value should be kept uh, along all future time. And in the presence of those uh, possible noises, well, this quantity should become negligible uh, in some sense to be specified with respect to n. OK, so this is the very, a very general framework for uh, the observer problem. And as I said, I would like to focus on uh, basic results, which will be useful later on. So basic results, in fact, are those related to uh, linear versions of this very general form, that is where x dot and y are only linear functions on, of capital X, U and N, depending on those quantities via matrices A, B, C, D. So of course this model can, can, can come from uh, uh, an original description which is uh, a priori linear, but this uh, of course very uh, rarely happens in real life. Uh, most of the time we have those more general nonlinear descriptions, but such a linear re representation can result from an approximate linearization of the general nonlinear description. And that on the basis of such uh, a linear description, then uh, an observer will take the form of a simple copy of the dynamical description of the evolution of X, uh, corrected proportionally to the difference between the reconstructed output compared with the uh, the actual measurement we have on this output. OK, and this proportional correction gain K here should be chosen according to the target I mentioned before, that is X hat minus X decays to zero when there is no noise, meaning that zero should be asymptotically stable for the, the error system X hat minus X dot equals a minus kc x hat minus x. OK, and I, I mentioned those basic results as historical ones because uh, these are basically uh, the uh, primary results due to Kalman, uh, who uh, gave uh, as, a, as a solution to this problem uh, a gain k of the form uh, function of a matrix M here, uh, solution of this uh, differential Riccati equation, uh, both of these two equations parametrized by these uh, capital capital N sub Y and capital L, N sub X matrices. Okay, and the idea is that such an observer uh, will be the right candidate to minimize uh, the squared norm of the error X hat minus X in the expectation meaning uh, and ensure that uh, x hat minus x does indeed decay to zero as t grows to infinity again in the expectation uh, meaning due to these uh, stochastic noises here and this can be ensured uh, under suitable conditions in terms of so-called observability which uh, more uh, roughly speaking means that we do have all the information on capital X in the evolution of Y and appropriate tuning uh, via the choices of these N sub Y and N sub X here, which should be related to uh, N sub or the state noise, small N sub X and the output noise, small N sub Y uh, to ensure the optimality in, in as the first criterion here and we do need uh, typically n sum x to be positive definite for instance to ensure uh, convergence to zero uh, of this error so this is the very basic Kalman result which can be refined uh, by using for instance a forgetting factor which makes the choosing the tuning of this observer even simpler uh, because by introducing this uh, forgetting factor in, in, the, in the underlying optimization problem, uh, we just uh, have to introduce this uh, additional term in the 
computation of M with lambda is the forgetting scalar forgetting factor, which is to be chosen uh, only positive to ensure uh, convergence to zero of this error. OK, so this gives a, a very powerful uh, and about observability. I've not said that uh, basically uh, here. This means that uh, the pair AC should satisfy the so-called uniform complete observability condition, which can be expressed in terms of uh, the observability Gramian that I've not included in, in those recalls here. OK, so this is just to to recall that we have here uh, a quite uh, general as long as we are uh, considering linear systems of this form uh, tool, which can be easily tuned uh, even in front of uh, possible noises affecting the state and output equations. Of course, uh, from Kalman times, uh, I mentioned that there is there were a lot of uh, subsequent developments which uh, basically correspond to extensions of this uh, to uh, possible nonlinear versions, for instance, of, of the model. But I will not have to use these uh, uh, improved versions uh, for the purpose of my talk today. Uh, instead, you can refer to various references. Uh, I mentioned here uh, my own book, which is now uh, 15 years old or or almost that. OK, so. Instead of a, of giving more details about observer design itself, I would like to uh, spend more time uh, about uh, possible applications in this uh, microscopy area uh, and trying to illustrate uh, those various families of uses that I I've tried to uh, emphasize in my introduction introductory uh, discussion about observers that is a uh, fit forward feed forward control feedback control and uh, monitoring or modeling applications okay so about microscopy just to give a similar uh, rough introduction as the one i gave about observers the main motivation that uh, that i can mention uh, for the work i'm going to 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 mention to, to present is the uh, the interest to go towards uh, nanoscale uh, that is moving from the scale that we can see uh, with current eye uh, vision uh, that is milliscale say uh, down to nanoscale and just to give a, a rough overview of what does this mean uh, the milliscale more or less is the size of an ant OK, a few millimeters uh, going uh, down to uh, hundreds of uh, micrometers. You can find this uh, nice dust mite uh, shown here. Uh, even smaller, you can find for tens of uh, human for tens of micrometers. You can find the human hair. OK, and uh, 10 times uh, smaller we have for instance, uh, red uh, and white uh, blood cells. Uh, and now going even uh, lower, uh, below the micrometer, that is tens to hundreds of uh, nanometers, uh, you will first find, uh, for instance, viruses. I, I wanted not to mention once more uh, uh, this uh, pandemic, but in fact, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 was shown to be of about uh, of a size of about uh, 50 to 140 nanometers. So you are in the scale of nanometer. Uh, even lower, you can find the, the DNA molecule for a few nanometers. And of course, going even much smaller, you can find uh, at the scale of nanometer and even less angstrom, uh, you can find the atomic scale. OK, so the uh, the way down to this nanometer scale motivated uh, the development of a special family of microscopy, which is known as scanning probe microscopy. Uh, so it's, as usual, uh, an area where a lot of acronyms are used. So scanning probe microscopy is uh, reduced into SPM. OK, so just a few milestones about SPM. 
uh, they were introduced a bit later than the Kalman filter uh, in the 1980s, basically with the introduction in 1981 uh, of the so-called STM for scanning tunneling microscope due to Gerd Binnig and Heinrich Rohr. Uh, and uh, similarly to Lumberger, immediately following uh, uh, Kalman's work, we have an improvement uh, into the so-called AFM, Atomic Force Microscope, uh, which, was, which is due to, again, Binig and then with uh, Quaid and Gerber in 1986. And actually this invention, this, estimate, this STM invention, uh, will will be at the origin of the uh, Nobel Prize, uh, which will be won by uh, Binning and Roher in 1986, immediately after this AFM invention. OK, and from that time on, we have uh, a lot of uh, subsequent developments in the field of SPM with uh, a lot of variants, I would say, uh, in these SPM techniques, uh, including uh, other type of uh, of interactions because atomic force microscopy means that we are relying on atomic forces uh, between the uh, the sensitive probe and the sample under study and you can replace the atomic force by an electric force giving rise to an EFM a magnetic force giving rise to MFM and so on so there is a lot of uh, variants of uh, this original STM. Uh, and there are also uh, uh, quite uh, interesting developments related to uh, dynamical properties of those SPM, uh, meaning that we have uh, colleagues from uh, or related to control community entering into the play with uh, purposes related to increasing scanning rate for instance or increasing robustness in the in the measurement provided by the, those microscopes okay uh, so talking about interest for control community i can focus more precisely uh, on observer challenges uh, just to mention that observers are needed for a proper variation of such of such uh, uh, instruments uh, as as uh, motivated uh, by the the use in in feedback, for instance, uh, these observers are to face uh, mathematical models, including various types of dynamics, due to the fact that we are, as usual, combining uh, actuators, sensors, and uh, a hard process. So actuators can be of various uh, nature, for instance, uh, piezo uh, actuators. Uh, sensors, depending on the physics underlying uh, the the operation of the, the microscope, and we have the uh, sensitive part uh, motion itself, uh, typically a cantilever, uh, which can have its own dynamics. Okay, but the main problem is that uh, looking at those very small scales, of course, we are facing uh, noises of very high levels. Uh, we are also faces, facing uh, disturbances of different types and uh, lack of knowledge of internal variables as uh, usual in, in control problems. OK, so just to for the purpose of uh, clarity and, and, and uh, uh, say being tutorial in my presentation, uh, I, I would like to focus on the typical model that can arise from these uh, various uh, different uh, uh, natures of, of SPM, uh, which in fact can be reduced to a second order dynamical system, linear, uh, where uh, Y is directly uh, related to the first variable, for instance, uh, U is the driving variable, and V and W are unknown input affecting this dynamical behavior, uh, W representing typically the measurement noise, and V uh, possible disturbances and uh, external noise affecting the dynamical behavior. Okay, so typically 
the main idea following the, the introductory words I gave about observers uh, framework uh, can be to extract from this V uh, variable affecting the dynamical equation here, the deterministic part uh, of it and, and leave as an external unknown variable the noise, basically, and extend the model with uh, an appropriate model for this deterministic part in V, say V0. And the most simple extension we can think of is uh, assuming very slow variation of this, of this deterministic part, that is V0 dot is zero. And then we are brought to a third order linear model affected by noises, assumed to be uh, white noises, uh, for which we can uh, apply directly Kalman design. Okay, and this is what can be done, uh, for instance, uh, for various configurations of uh, SPM uh, problems. So to, to start uh, those illustrations, uh, let me focus on this original, uh, very first uh, SPM type of microscope, that is uh, what I call the STM uh, or scanning tunneling microscope. Uh, the principle is that it relies on the quantum phenomenon uh, corresponding to tunneling current uh, from which if we approach a tip, very sharp, sharp tip to a sample surface, both of them being metallic, and we apply some uh, uh, difference of potential between both, then uh, we will be able to see some current flowing from the tip to the surface via an appropriate sensor, even though the tip remains uh, distant from the, surf the surface. In fact, this phenomenon only appears when this distance becomes uh, more or less lower than one nanometer. So we are operating at a nanometer scale. Of course, we, we can detect only very small currents, meaning that we need a very large current amplifier. And this can be used to recover the information of surface variation if we move the tip over the surface, provided that we keep the distance uh, between the tip and the surface under control, meaning in turn that this device can only operate in closed loop. Okay, so we are here in front of a system for which control is unavoid unavoidable for it to operate and its purpose is to measure. So the, the measurement is only possible under the control of the, the system. And to control it, we need the measurement, which is uh, the, the, the quantity to be measured, to be controlled. Okay, so we have here the basic uh, operation of this STM. So seen from upper, from above, uh, this uh, red dot here represents the tip of the, of, the, of the STM, which will be moved over the surface and the position of the tip over the surface, the surface is to be monitored via uh, sensors, position sensors in both X and Y directions. Okay, so you have you have uh, this operation operation in 3D, uh, vertical motion to keep the tunneling current constant, and a horizontal motion to scan the surface from above. Okay, so now let me. Uh, before presenting the first application, uh, let me uh, further present this STM uh, support. So uh, the, all the results I'm going to present are based on experimentations, actual experimentations. And when talking about STM, those experimentations uh, took place in, in fact in our GIPSA, uh, in GIPSA department, uh, a picture of which can be seen here. So it's a homemade prototype of STM with no specific uh, controlled uh, ambience. That is, we are in, in natural environment subject to variations of temperature, hygrometry, uh, noise, uh, I mean, acoustic noise and so on. So plenty of 
of disturbances. So here is a zoom on the on the main part of this STM. So the, the STM is here. We have here a camera to look at what happens, a uh, high precision camera, even though it cannot go down to nanoscale, of course. So this is a zoom of the central part of this. You can guess uh, the tip here and uh, the surface where the tip ref reflects below. And if we look at what sees the camera, so this is a um, recumbent uh, version of this picture. So we have the tip on the left part and the reflection of the right on the right part uh, on the sample. OK, so this distance here should be made smaller than one nanometer. Clearly here it's just uh, a few micrometers. OK, so as a first uh, possible application, uh, let me mention uh, the feedforward control case uh, here dealing with uh, feedforward disturbance rejection. So we are doing this in the context of XY motion. So we have here a view from above of the, of the STM device. Uh, XY motion meaning that we need to move the, the tip uh, according to pre-specified profiles. Okay. And when doing this, so we are facing disturbances of various types, and I will focus on one specific disturbance, uh, giving rise to uh, the need for a disturbance observer. So if I want to uh, sketch, to depict the problem uh, schematically here, uh, we have the piezo driving the, the horizontal motion, okay, either an X in X direction or in Y direction. So here, it's just given in any of these directions in 1D. We have a voltage amplifier between the, the applied voltage and the effect on the piezo. We have the sensor giving the information on the actual position of, of the tip. It's a capacitive sensor. OK, and the idea is to use a feed forward control to compensate for uh, steady state uh, effects of uh, disturbances in this dynamical behavior uh, in this not dynamical i said in steady state so in this behavior and here the disturbances will the the disturbance i will focus on will come from the piezo which exhibits uh, typically in all these applications hysteresis that is if we move uh, the if we if, if we change the 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 voltage apply to the piezo the piezo will move according to the red curve uh, shown here uh, to the black curve shown here and if we move back it will move according to this other curve okay so this corresponds to uh, hysteresis static nonlinearity denoted by nl of v here okay so we do have the point is that we do have uh, various possibilities to obtain an explicit model of this uh, behavior uh, for instance via a so-called PI modeling. Here it's to be understood as a prandtl ishlinsky model, uh, which is a combination of backlashes, okay, and which presents the interest to also give rise to a possible explicit inverse model, which can be used for a simple feedforward compensation of this nonlinearity. But of course, this approximate modeling will leave uncompensated the effect of the difference, the mismatch between the red curve and the black curve here. So this appears and as an additive disturbance, which will vary depending on the operating point, but in a way which can be neglected as compared to the dynamics of the remainder of the system. So if you look at the piezodynamics, it's a typical second order dynamical behavior with uh, its own uh, damping frequency, pulse, uh, pulse, uh, natural uh, pulsation, and so on, with the effects of uh, the, the hysteresis nonlinearity of the applied voltage amplified statically because we can neglect uh, the, dyna the dynamics of the voltage amplifier here. Okay, and the idea is that this nonlinearity is made of some part which can be modeled via this PI modeling, for instance, as admitting an explicit inverse model. And an additional effect 
corresponding to the mismatch between this gamma model and the actual nonlinearity NL. Okay, so the idea is that we just precompensate the model part and we are left with a typical model of second order as the one I proposed in my introduction of this application part. OK, so we just extend this model with d dot equals zero and we apply uh, we apply a Kalman observer to get an estimate of D. We use this estimate of D to precompensate it in the control of this uh, piezo in a pure fit forward form. OK, and here are some results. So you can see here uh, the effect of this hysteresis that we obtained experimentally. Uh, so blue line, so the green dotted line corresponds to the measured behavior. So you cannot see much more difference with the blue reconstructed line, which corresponds to the estimated behavior based on gamma and the d hat estimated by our observer. Okay, so if you look at the effect in the feed forward control, say you want to, to track a tri triangle profile in uh, uh, black in this picture. Uh, so you can see that with no compensation at all of this hysteresis, we obtain the red curve here, which not with a persistent tracking error. And if we use our uh, compensation of hysteresis, we obtain the blue curve, which is exactly superposed with the uh, red reference, with the black reference even at those uh, large values here uh, for which we you have a zoom on this small part now if we, if we compare with only when only using the pi compensation front ischlisky compensation then you can see that uh, there remains a small error which can be seen for instance as compared to the one here uh, at large values and we have the same type of uh, improvement when looking at step tracking, for instance, uh, here with full compensation and here with only PI compensation. OK. So as a second uh, possible use of an observer, I mentioned it as the first uh, one, but here I present it as a second application in STM field. It, there is this feedback control problem. So here I will present this for the vertical control of this STM, that is for the tunneling, tunneling current control. So we have a zoom here on the tip over the surface here, and we are facing a, a standard state observer problem. So here we have for this third dimension, vertical dimension, we also have a voltage amplifier, a piezo. We have the tunneling effect, which is a nonlinear uh, effect typically represented by an exponential nonlinear function uh, combining the sample surface, which is a known Z sub S, to the actual position of the tip. And this results in a, a current, which is measured by a current sensor. OK, so the idea is to use this measurement to control uh, this system uh, to ensure some uh, pre-specified uh, control profile. OK, so we need to use feedback. And uh, if I, well, we not enter in, in the full details here, but if I just uh, sketch a, a rough dynamical representation here, you can see a simple first order for the voltage amplifier, simple first order for the current sensor um, dynamical behavior, where here we have the tunneling current function. And here, again, the to uh, second order representation of the piezo uh, dynamical part. In fact, in this case, in this vertical motion, the piezo is much faster than uh, the uh, current and voltage uh, dynamics. So we can reduce uh, the model description by omitting the piezo dynamics, and we are left with a second order model for which we can obtain my standard representation via linearization of this exponential nonlinearity and uh, transformation into canonical, canonical form. OK, so here we don't know this quantity here, which is related to the variations of the surface when moving the tip over the surface. 
We just extend the model with this unknown quantity and we design a control which can be based on the Kalman observer, typically, which is designed on the basis of this model. So, for instance, uh, control in including an integral action in a quadratic optimal way, say an LQI control. And here is an illustration of uh, real experimental results obtained in this case, where I only present here the comparison with between the actual measurement in blue and the reconstructed measurement in red, which is superposed because I cannot validate the unknown internal state since I don't measure it. OK, so the only validation I can use uh, is uh, the one related to the control target, which is controlling the tunneling current to a value which is represented here by this uh, orange, uh, yellow orange uh, line. So this part corresponds to uh, the starting part of the STM operation. And after, uh, let's say, 10 seconds, we obtain the controlled regulated uh, operation of the STM around this reference value. So it's pretty noisy in this case. But uh, if you compare this with uh, what is obtained by a standard PI uh, tuning, you can see that with the PI, without taking advantage of the filtering provided by the, the observer, you have the noise which is much amplified, which is much more amplified with variations going more or less between the minimal value 0 up to the maximum value 10. OK? And yeah, I'm not sure I have much more time, but I included here to, to be even more representative of this behavior, some uh, kind of uh, emulated uh, representation of this actual operation uh, via this small animation here, going from a 3D uh, macro scale down to uh, 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 a nanometer scale. So this is in red the surface represented with those variations, and in yellow you have the tip approached to the surface at a distance between which is uh, below one nanometer. Okay, and you you have here the real data which are used to uh, simulate this motion. And of course, if you are uh, far from the surface, uh, you decrease the the current, so you decrease the related uh, voltage. Here, uh, one volt is more or less one nanometer. Uh, and if you increase the, if you decrease the, the distance, you increase the current. OK, so this, is what, this was just to, to give an illustration, uh, animated illustration of this type of result. And to go further in, in the illustration of this, uh, of this application, I wanted to also uh, discuss uh, rapidly about application in surface reconstruction. OK, so the idea is that by using uh, the variation of the control when scanning the tip over the surface, uh, and this scan is based on the, the observer estimating z sub s, OK, by using the control variations, we are able to recover the surface variations. So these are very first results we obtained uh, five years ago uh, by scanning a, a small part over the, the piece, uh, the, the, the sample which is uh, shown here by a photo by our high precision camera. And here is the reconstruction of a surface in a so-called flat, uh, flat area. Uh, this is to be compared with what happens, for instance, uh, around this red circle, for which we have some kind of irregularity on the surface, looking like a small hole. And we, can see, we could detect the edge of the hole by our uh, rough scanning here. And in fact, we could improve uh, those uh, surface reconstruction results uh, by improving the observer, so I, I've not, uh, I've decided not to enter into the technical observer these results, but uh, just show the the obtained uh, experimental ones. Uh, so here you have the surface reconstruction on a spill, small uh, strip, uh, about uh, 0 0.5 nanometer by uh, one nanometer or 1.5 uh, nanometer, where you can see that there are different parts corresponding to these different colors here. 
uh, highlighting in fact different atoms in in the in the sample here the sample is made of graphite and we could compare more or less what we obtained to what can be obtained by a standard optimized uh, but commercial stm okay so you have the same kind of of uh, texture in this with the same uh, type of uh, coloring here and we could recover the quite accurate distance, uh, 350 picometers, uh, as compared to 400 picometers. And improving even better those results, we could obtain uh, in the latest results, which appeared uh, in uh, last May, actually pictures as the one shown in this uh, in this representation here in 3D, uh, where you can recognize. Uh, some kind of hexagonal uh, shape, which can be seen from above, uh, with two characteristic distances, D1 between two, uh, say, red atoms, and D2 between one red and one uh, white atom, which are different, which are atoms of different natures, um, which are very well known in the graphite uh, crystallographic structure. And in fact, if you Look, if you compare those results we obtained with our experiment, as you could see it on the photo before, uh, we are uh, pretty accurate as compared to the standard knowledge on those distances, because uh, these D1 should be compared to 240 picometers, should be compared to 246. So we just have six picometers of error, uh, about 2% of error. And a bit more, but uh, still about 10% of error for this D2 distance uh, to be compared to 142 micrometers. So this uh, illustrates pretty good efficiency of our approach because we were able to obtain a very accurate uh, surface reconstruction, which are quite comparable to those obtained with uh, commercial improved uh, optimized STM. OK, so this was published uh, in May 2021. And just before concluding, I have a final example that I can I can uh, present also uh, a bit rapidly uh, just to illustrate some monitoring like application uh, in the field of force measurement using an atomic force microscope. So this corresponds to uh, works which we were made a bit uh, earlier than done on STM uh, with an actual uh, commercial AFM in collaboration with the Re European Synchrotron Radiation Facility we have in Grenoble uh, and which uh, can illustrate, for instance, some fault-like observer application. Uh, so the, the idea of AFM operation is a bit different. We have a, a cantilever uh, which uh, bears this tip here. Uh, which is approached to uh, a surface. And the idea is that this uh, cantilever has a motion, so it's a very flexible cantilever, and its motion will, will be sensitive to the atomic force uh, due to the interaction, uh, proximity interaction of this tip and the surface here. And the variation of this position, the, the motion of this tip here, is measured via a laser and a photodiode. Okay, so the main purpose of this type of instrument is to recover the information of the force here via the motion measurement. And this force being an atomic force is in practice very, very weak, very low. So the main challenge is to reduce the magnitude of the force to be detected in spite of uh, the noise affecting the, the, the instrument at this level, uh, typical uh, mechanical or, or um, electrical noises included in, in, the, in the device. But to be able to, to validate our approach, since we, we don't have uh, the theoretical reference of this atomic force, uh, we just modified a bit this operation into uh, something like an EFM, electric force microscopy, by uh, applying some voltage between this cantilever and the surface, turning the interaction uh, to be dominated by an electrostatic force, for which we do have a model, uh, and 
coefficients could be identified prior to any experiment. And then the idea was to uh, vary the, electro the electrostatic force by varying the applied voltage here, known as uh, we apply it, and uh, compare the estimated force we could obtain by our observer approach to the one related to the voltage variation. Okay, so the once again, the dynamical behavior is the dynamical behavior of this uh, mechanical motion. So a second order uh, description is okay, subject to this electrostatic force depending on this V voltage applied. So we just rewrite our model in state space form with extension uh, related to uh, F dot equals zero, subject to noises here. And here are uh, obtained results, experimental obtained results. With here, the voltage we gen generated to simulate force variations with a square profile here. And here is the estimated voltage that we could obtain to be compared to this uh, generated voltage. So you can see uh, so is, there is no superposition here, but by just looking at those two pictures, you can see that we could indeed uh, recover very accurately and very rapidly uh, the applied voltage assumed to be unknown by the observer. Okay, and if you translate this voltage into uh, a corresponding force, then you can see that this force is, I don't know if you can see it, but is of a magnitude of about two nanonewton here, uh, which is the, the order of magnitude, which was more or less the one reached by our colleagues, uh, physicists from physics, uh, we were working with at that time, but they were obtaining this type of results by using an, a an AFM, atomic force microscope, in uh, a very special ambient conditions, uh, keeping temperature very low, uh, very uh, clean room, very clean operation and so on. While we just took, in our case, we just took this a portable AFM, we put it in, in a room with no control at all, and we were able to obtain uh, similar uh, accurate uh, results in, in, in measuring this weak force. And in fact, we, can, we could even uh, obtain results uh, down to a few uh, tens of piconewtons. So we were quite proud of those results at, at that time. And I think with this, I will finish my uh, presentation, uh, which has shown, I hope, that observers do allow to observe at micro, micro at submicronic scales uh, for various microscope configurations by uh, addressing various uh, estimation and control problems, and uh, with a lot of other uh, options that I'm not that I've not entered into, uh, say more sophisticated possibilities uh, left for uh, future discussions, presentations. And before concluding, I would like to thank uh, uh, some of the main PhD students who contributed to to those results, uh, going back to uh, ten years ago. Uh, together with my uh, dear colleague and wife Alina Voda who is working with me on this topic uh, at uh, in, in Grenoble. And thank you all for your attention. Yeah, I hope it was interesting. Uh, excuse uh, me, one moment. I was like uh, uh, talking with a student, <laughs> as always. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Besançon. Uh, is that the way the, uh, the correct procedure of your name? Besançon? Besançon, yes. Besançon. I'm really bad at accent and everything. I I actually, you can, uh, my accent is from Florida, you, you can imagine. Uh, by the way, anything? Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Excuses, I was 
you know, as always, we are always busy. Uh, eh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was a great presentation. And right now, if you don't mind, anybody has a, a questions about the, and the, the presentation, please raise your hand and we will be to see if you are, you want to, any any kind of questions anything i'm not an expert in this i actually am a guy in uh, deep learning and machine learning and <laughs> that's what i do so uh, the differential equation is not my <laughs> it's not my uh, cup of tea any questions anybody has anything please feel free to raise your hand Ah, here we have Ismael Jimenez. Uh, can you please ask your questions? And uh, uh, Professor Besançon will be uh, will do the best for answering your question. Okay. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the presentation. It was very interesting, especially in the last case of a study. Uh, I see your results very uh, good, and I, I am I am working with uh, observers too. And some of the uh, interesting part is in in my case is the, the time delay between the estimated part and the real part, for example. No, in your experimental results. Mm, the voltage, the real voltage you applied and the estimated you have, which is the time delay on on the on these uh, signals? Uh, okay, so in in fact, uh, I did not uh, superpose these two pictures, but uh, the the estimation time, I, I, there is no time delay visible in, in those experiments. In fact, everything is very fast. We are dealing with the very fast dynamics. So everything is very fast. There is no time delay. You just have an estimation time, which can be seen uh, at the beginning here because I start the observer at zero while the, the applied voltage is already at 10. So you can see that uh, the convergence time is uh, much smaller than uh, one uh, millisecond. I mean, it's uh, it's very, very fast. Yeah. <coughs> and, and I suppose if, uh, in these uh, experiments, this uh, time delay, for example, is not uh, important because you, you only have want to, to estimate the, the other part in the force. And another other question I, I want to know which kind of processing device you use uh, where you implement the, the estimators? Okay, you, you mean uh, the, the computing uh, support? Yeah. Uh, well, everything is made with MATLAB, in fact, uh, because in all these experiments, well, not, not all, uh, in this experiment, in this particular experiment, it's an offline estimation. So I just picked the, the data on the, actual experiment and and it's processed offline uh, but even for the for the the online observer based uh, control of, of the stm it's uh, using the real time workshop of matlab in fact so okay. we have a pc target and we just uh, upload the, the data. matlab files on it okay thanks uh, your results are very good and I'm happy for being here. Thank you. Thank you for the questions and your interest. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Anybody else who wants to ask a question? Uh, please feel free. I don't see anybody. But I have a question as a, as a guy who doesn't come from this area at all. And given that right now we are in deep learning and we're interested, uh, we're starting to get interested in solving basically uh, uh, some uh, partial differential equations because uh, we noticed that some of our devices like the residual networks tends to uh, look like uh, actually an Euler equation. And we already have a paper from 2020 where they are using simulations. 
in, in the area you are observability, have, have you done or have you used uh, deep learners, residual networks, or some kind, uh, some kind of similar device for solving some of your problems? Uh, only, only a kind of a question from the area of that is kind of 90 degrees from you. Yeah, in fact, uh, not so far, but uh, I'm starting to look at the, the, what can be done uh, in the area of uh, of uh, these uh, learning uh, uh, field as compared to what can be done with observers. So uh, mm. I've just started to, to look at this issue because, of course, it's uh, very uh, considered in the community, uh, even in control community, there is a, an increasing amount of interest uh, for these tools, uh, which are more and more efficient. Uh, so the idea is to is to see if we can combine the knowledge we use in, in observer approach mm -hmm. and the efficiency, computing efficiency you can have in uh, in uh, learning. The massive the massive parallel systems that we are using and one thing question that comes to my mind and it's something that we are have been dealing and we are not exactly that uh, doing that great in roads of uh, do you believe your observability devices could be used to try to understand the black boxes that we're building because there there is a ton of code out there and it's becoming more and more difficult to try to it takes like a Six, six to seven years to say, ah, no, what you are doing is actually, as they point, uh, the MIT people were saying about the batch normalization by Google, a serendipitous uh, result and not a real research result. It was kind of a more a random uh, happening in the in the area. Only a question because it's like uh, you're an expert in observability. We have those devices, and we are starting to realize that basically we're randomly constructing architectures, and some are based on intuitions, but they are not that fundamented. Yeah, yeah, but this is this is an open question of interest. Uh, I cannot answer right now, but I think it's a it's an interesting question to be considered uh, because because observability is a tool to guarantee. Uh, that you will indeed uh, recover information which is consistent. Mm -hmm. And this is the drawback uh, in, in many approaches, black box approaches, uh, as the one you mentioned, because you, you are not sure of what you are reconstructing, actually. I completely agree. We, we are not sure, but they are working. That's the, the sad part. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why they, they do need to be, to be fully... Fully understood. Yeah, I know. Understood, yes, and analyzed with with the uh, formal tools. And I think yeah. uh, observer tools can be of interest in, in that regard. That that I completely agree. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? Even ah, Doctor uh, Doctor uh, uh, Gerardo Silva. He has a question. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, nice and interesting. Plenary lecture, Professor Gildas Besanzon. Uh, I have one question: and How you can compare the observer resource with uh, Kalman filtering, and also with the, the artificial intelligence uh, uh, algorithms, uh, which are now more, um, um, how to say, uh, are, are uh, there are many people interested in, on, on using uh, artificial intelligence like neural networks, fossil logic, trying to replace this this uh, formal of from for observers. What can you say about that? Yeah, it's very similar to the question we just had before. In fact, uh, uh, there are they should be complementary tools. I mean. Uh, as I can see this uh, from my point of view on on the on all those uh, uh, pure algorithmic approaches, uh, there is no use of any knowledge at all. While conversely, in the observer approach, we we do strongly rely on some uh, physical knowledge underlying in the modeling. So there should be some way to to combine both. Uh, in in uh, an efficient way, but uh, but till now I've not uh, tried anything in this direction, so I, I I have no answer. But my answer is that 
there is an interest in in combining both, I guess. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the qu for the question, uh, Dr. Gerardo Silva. It really was an interesting question. Thank you very much for your answer, Dr. Vesanson. Uh, anybody else? Uh, this is an interesting talk. <laughs> if we can have more questions, anybody wants to make one? Uh, seems to be ah the Luis Emilio Tonics uh, Gleason. Luis, state state your uh, your question. Tonics, uh, you raise your hand. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. Sorry, I was mute. Uh, yeah, I, I come from uh, embedded systems uh, uh, work, uh, and I have some questions about it. Uh, how uh, hard could be to make these uh, translate this to an embedded system, just to make it look more like a production code? You know, uh, keeping out of uh, Metal lot simulations and embedded with C or or maybe with FPGA, something like that. Do you think that is uh, IC path for this? Uh, I think this could be feasible. I mean, uh, uh, in all the results I pre presented, uh, we are just using very basic observer tools, uh, which could be embedded. I don't know what you mean exactly by embedded, but if if you use some FPGA uh, device, for instance, uh, this, this I guess, can be done. We have not uh, done it so far. This was part of our intentions at some point, but unfortunately, we cannot do all what we were wanting to, were wanting to do uh, at any time. So we could not do it so far, but I guess this could be feasible uh, to embed uh, this type of tools uh, in portable devices. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question. Any 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 other question? Anybody else? Uh, raise your hand. <coughs> raise your hand. <laughs> Anybody ha can have a question. Uh, um, um, it seems to be that nobody else is uh, willing to ask a question, so. Uh, I need to say, uh, well, that's it. We we can close this uh, talk, but I I, I, I wanna uh, yeah. I can ask. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to ask. Ah, yeah, Doctor Herdo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I pass, uh, professor... I, I pass the I pass the, the word for to you. Okay, Professor Gildas Besanson, um, uh, on behalf of the program committee, we want to thank you for your. Nice and interesting uh, topic of this plenary lecture, and 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 also uh, Professor Dr. Ofelia Begovic is is over there in simple startup. Uh, Dr. Ofelia, Dr. Ofelia, well. We, we Can you say something? To, uh, to, to hear Gildas, your talk is very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Professor. So, thank you very much for your participation and and your collaboration uh, in this remote uh, virtual conference. <laughs> thank you. So, thank, thank you, you thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I unfortunately, switch off because uh, for me it's the the end of the day, so I will let you go on with the content. Yes, sure. And enjoy it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you for to all the to all the attendees and participation. So thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much to you. Thank you for, <laughs> for <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ophelia. Thank you. Bye. 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 So um, in a few minutes, uh, we will start with the technical sessions as at uh, 12 o'clock uh, in rooms one, two and three. So 
Thank you very much to all the attendees and, and please go to the web page to get connected to, uh, to all the rooms. Thank you very much. Thank you, Valente. Saludos, Ophelia. Dile productos de la deuda.